f***ing fuel. Shit. Oh, f***, it's pissed all over my clean floor. So we've got Vicky in front of the camera. She doesn't want to be on YouTube, doesn't want to be in front of the camera, but we have to talk about her bike, um, the Dominatrix. Um, so this is absolutely the noisiest bike in the place. So Vicky, tell us all about this bike. What's the story? So the story, okay, basically I uh, saw this on the Bike Shed website many years ago and it was way too expensive. Um, it was an Andrew Greenland build and I fell in love with it but decided I couldn't afford it. Two or three years later it came back on the market. So I went and bought it at the dead of night outside in a garage and she didn't start which is a really good start to buying a bike. Um, after spending an hour and just dreaming about this exhaust and how it would sound, finally she came to life. She popped and banged a few times and then died again, so I bought it, as you do. So Andrew Greenland is a guy based in Wales and uh, he takes Honda Dominators. Um, in the States they're known as the NX650 and he turns them into what he kind of considers a, a six days tribute bike. And uh, when this bike was first built by Andrew Greenland, it was one of about a dozen that he did that were all slightly different. The bike was originally a red, it had a, a side panel on it to put a number on, and it was a little bit taller. Yep. Um, so it was a, quite a different looking bike. So one of the first things we needed to do was make the bike a little bit more Vicky and lower it and do a whole bunch of things to it. And make it work, of course, because that's make it ideal. Work. So to get the bike working, we took it to uh, Victory Motorcycles, where Untitled Motorcycles are based. Yep. Um, so uh, Rex and the crew could have a fiddle about with the bike. And uh, we changed quite a lot of things. We made the bike a bit lower. Um, and we also we changed the electrics, we moved the battery, um, changed where all the fuses were, took the side panels new off. New headlight. Oh yeah, we put a new headlight on the bike. So yeah, we did quite a lot of work. And for a while, the bike ran fine and it was great. It was amazing. I think the problem was you ragged it everywhere and uh, caned it, made as much noise as you could, um, but sadly it didn't last as a working bike for no, that long. No, So then we took it to... CRC, Will and the boys, worked their magic. Um, I think that was the point where I really wanted to change the shape and the feel of the bike, so they cut down the frame to make this lovely um, seat, because the seat previously had a big heavy um, back end on it. It was, was heavy duty fiberglass. It Andrew Greenland builds bikes to last and yeah. it was an absolute yeah. solid. It was very pretty, hugely heavy and there, was, there wasn't room for two. No, well there's never room for two on my bikes but um, uh, yeah so we uh, they messed around, did a new seat, got a new tank, we got lovely Ross, he, did, he surprised me and made me some beautiful feathers. I won't tell you what's written underneath it because it's really rude and uh, we'll probably get that beeped out. Um, and um, so CGR 125 tank on there, put some indicators but they constantly break because um, I don't really look after my bike. And um, yeah, and they built a whole new loom. And we got it, I think we remounted actually the exhaust because I dragged it around quite a few times so it was rattling. And uh, yeah, and then that's kind of, we had a new seat made. Um, this is the, about the third seat on it because as you can see, I have a bit of a, a water problem going on. <laughs> this seat is like a giant sponge. <laughs> So Basically, my arse gets wet every single time I take it out, even if it's been in the dry for three months. I'll tell you what though, the good thing about this bike, right, anybody who rides it goes and buys a Dominator. So Gareth Roberts was on one of his bikes, we were all going out for a ride, he broke down as usual, and uh, I said to him, you can take this, I'll take the Sport Classic, and literally within a week, he went and bought a dominator. They are so much fun. Every day I come to work, I have the biggest smile. Doesn't matter what arseholes I meet on the road. Um, speed humps or jumps. Um, it's just great fun and it's super loud. So, yeah. And also what's really good about this particular bike is um, going back over the history of it, I'm pretty <coughs> sure that Andrew Greenland fitted a 720 kit. So it's also bigger bore. It's a real thumper. <coughs> I mean, it runs out of puff at about 60 miles an hour, but from naught to 60, it's, it's absolutely it's brilliant. It's a, it's a proper beast of a bike to ride. Really, really good fun. Also, she's done me well. I mean, I've done three dirt quakes on this, I think, about three Malay miles. And I've done dirt quake on You've this. You've done dirt quake on this. Um, 
Um, we did scramble on event, which unfortunately it was so muddy and clogged up, it only went round once or twice. She's properly been used and abused and I, I just love this bike and I never want to get rid of it and I won't get rid of it. But it's not a good ride anymore because it needs a lot of work so well it took me half an hour to get it started this <laughs> so morning. then i decided why not have one two? In and I'll, I'll wheel that one out so this is another honda dominator 650 or nx 650 this came up on the bike shed custom classified yeah and actually the guy who commissioned the build had seen your bike yeah and really liked it so actually this bike is a kind of homage to Vicky's previous bike, which of course is an Andrew Greenland original. Yep. So let's talk about the spec of the bike a little bit. Um, the original Honda Dominator, um, the 650, was quite a big chunky looking bike with an integrated fairing, um, quite an ugly thing. And, unless Full you of were, plastic, right? It was a complete plastic, lumpy, great thing. But underneath it all was this gorgeous bike. And most of the frame and, and the bike itself is fairly standard. Um, but going from the front, um, the original front wheel is, uh, would have been a 21 inch rim and this has been taken down to a 19 uh, which is just a little lighter, a bit more flickable and, uh, and also lowers the bike a little bit. The front end, the forks are standard although they have um, had the yokes lowered down the fork leg to lower the height of the bike. Obviously the front end's completely different with this Bates style light and this mud guard. Um, and then the bikes had rental bars fitted and this really small, I think it's a Smith's instrument clock, uh, which stays nicely out of the way of the key because anything else you mount on here tends to get in the way. These super tiny indicators are really nice bright LED items that actually just come from eBay. This is a copy of a Honda CG125 tank, which has come with this awful gash paint job on it, which we shall cover up. The engine itself has been fully rebuilt and painted black. It's got new pistons. As I said, the original header pipes here have been really well connected onto this aftermarket end can. Look at the welding. Which is really nice. And it came like Beautiful. that. Baffles obviously have been removed, so it's loud enough to be known as one of Vicky's bikes. Um, <laughs> Little Back big wheel's noise. the same, <laughs> shock is the same. There is a, a smaller front sprocket to make sure that the bike is geared for a little bit more go around town. Then changes um, to the frame actually happen from the back. So normally what happens is um, the Honda Dominator's got a very different frame from about here. So this part has all been chopped and remade to accommodate the traditional looped subframe um, for this kind of flat brat style seat. Um, they've done a really good job of integrating um, an LED light and indicator and it's a stop um, and brake light as well, all in this one unit. And uh, a really nicely fabricated metal mudguard um, with um, sort of number plate mount on there. Very naughty, this is the wrong colour. Um, so you'll get told off by the police. I'm the wrong size, but you know. You are the wrong size as well. <laughs> right, exactly. um, and pretty much, um, apart from that, the bike is as Honda meant it to be. Um, punchy, feisty, full of torque and really, really good fun. Although it does have the original 650 bore, it doesn't have the 720 kit on no, it. I've got that to do yet. <laughs> so but all of this bike to me is what the other bike was evolving into, yeah. but this one's clean, tidy, sorted, tight, yeah. and actually riding it feels like a new bike. Oh no, completely. I mean, that I've taken both out on the same day, literally swapped them over, and you feel that feels kind of very loose, and it's actually a very forgiving bike. This is very tight, nimble, um, again, with all the power, certainly all the noise. It's possibly one of the best London bikes I've ever ridden. Absolutely. It's good fun. And now I don't shoot anybody with bits of exhaust because my previous bike used to fly bits of metal out the back and the last person that got hit by that was Gareth in the shop. So um, it's actually refreshing for those guys not to be following me and getting a face full of metal. So the plan is strip that one down because I'm going to keep it. So the dominatrix, this is my little black foot. I've got a new paint job going to happen and I want to still rag that one at Dirt Quake or um, Malay Mile. Don't really want to rag this one but knowing me I'll probably take both on the day and see what I can get away with just in case she doesn't start. And um, yeah, it's just pure absolute filth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>